This Phoropter is uh, more than 25 years old and uh, I noticed that the marking on the Risley prism is starting to fade. so that it's no longer as visible. Now it's possible to repaint the arrow on this metal ring but it's such delicate work it's very difficult to uh, get a good outcome. This one is uh, quite quite sufficient still. You can still see the point of the uh, of the arrow whereas this one is the distal third of it's uh, sort of faded off. The, um, the new replacement part, however, is not this shiny metal ring. It's a black ring with a, with a white arrow, so typically um, uh, I replace these in pairs so that both sides look symmetrical. Now the simplest way to replace uh, these um, gear rings is to um, there's a screw on this knob and a screw on this knob. You remove the knob, you remove these two screws, and then there's one screw on the back of the uh, throopter body. You remove all those and the whole sol cylinder assembly comes off. And you do the same thing for the other side and you send those into a, an optical repair place like Lombard and um, um, tell them what you want done and they'll replace the parts and ship it back to you. Um, there can be easily um, a one-week downtime for that round-trip shipping, um, even if it only takes a day or two to get to the location. Some of these procedures, though, I try to do myself. Now, the first step, um, if you're going to take anything off the Risley, is you have to mark the lens surfaces so that you get it back together the same way the same proper calibration uh, after the repair. So uh, basically I mark them with a um, an ultra fine point magic marker. To start off I put a um, I set the scale at zero and I put a small plus sign right below the uh, arrow at the zero point. Then reaching the marker all the way through the phoropter body, I try to mark a vertical line and a few horizontal lines on the back surface of the Risley the funny markers uh, so I um, anyway uh, then I try to uh, trace exactly over it from the front side which is much easier it's, it's tough to make straight horizontal and vertical lines when you're reaching this uh, pen all the way through the phoropter body but it's very easy to trace it to match it on the front now with both sides of the lens marked. When you move away from the zero point you see all the lines diverge and it's easier to superimpose that to get back to the zero point to restore your calibration. So the more funny you make the lines the easier it is to uh, match them because you can really tell when they're out of kilter. So the next step is disassembly to replace the parts. Each Risley is secured with uh, two screws which has a Torx T5 head. Just remove those screws then you can lift off the plate, lift off the gear ring. Once the plate is off it's a good idea to put a little um, mark where the top of the arrow is to help um, get the part back in the proper position when you're reassembling. 
So these are various um, worn out Risley parts over the years. Uh, the main thing that happens is the uh, arrow wears out. I've tried uh, repainting them with paint, uh, repainting them with um, red nail polish, all with um, mixed success. Um, but, but the other approach is just to replace the whole ring. These are like $22 each from Lombard, and so usually if one side wears out, your replacement pairs because the Risley looks so different with um, one black ring and one shiny ring. I mean, they, they work equally, but, it, you know, I try to make it look symmetrical. This is um, an indicator plate that had worn out a lot of its markings. Um, this could have kept getting used, and I guess I've left a lot of these still in use. But it starts looking disreputable when it's like this, and this is only $5 for one of these. As you can see, the replacement gears are not the same... Um, appearance as the original. This is how the replacement gears are presently made. Besides this central uh, gear ring, there's also two other gears that can be removed. However, that's not necessary to remove those for this um, small repair. So reassembly appears quite easy. However, for um, if you're off by one tooth on this gear, it changes the calibration by one prism diopter. So once it's together, uh, there's a way to check to see if you're actually at zero once all the parts are back together again. With the Risleys back together again, this one moves very smoothly. This one does not. Uh, there's a certain amount of play in the uh, plate position here that if it's not um, aligned just right, it can actually impinge on the gear to make it hard to turn. So um, you have to play around with the alignment of this plate a little bit uh, to make sure that uh, You've got movement of the gear once it's together again, once the screws are tightened. Right now they're, they're loose and they can shift around. But I, you have to tighten it and then check to see if the movement's okay. As I get these two Risleys back together again, the, uh, the lines I drew on this look pretty well aligned when it's uh, at the zero mark here. Um, in this case, um, I put it back together again, but the lines look... Uh, better lined up when it's at one than it does at zero so it might not be quite aligned correctly but the proof of the pudding is is visually how does it look um, and what I do to check to see if the zero set is fairly close is I sight some object from a distance through the Risley and I'm using the upper corner of this piece of cardboard I have on the wall. That's about three or four feet away. And what I do is I sight through the Risley and then rotate it clockwise and watch the direction of movement of the thing I'm looking at. If it's really at zero, I really end up seeing no movement as I rotate it. If it's at one or two um, prism doctors away from the, the goal, um, it'll look like movement. So I'm putting it on uh, two prism doctors here and it looks like it's moving up a little as I'm rotating clockwise. Now I'm going to move it to um, one prism doctor in the other direction and as I rotate it it looks down like it's moving down as I rotate it clockwise. Now at zero uh, I think there's still some movement. It's difficult to see through a, a camera like this. You can actually get your eyeball right up through it uh, and get more accuracy than you can with a camera. But what I found um, is the zero point, there's still some down movement. 
at one prism doctor in this direction it looks like a zero point and anything away from that I'm starting getting movement whereas when I'm at with this one when I'm at zero um, it looks like there's there's no movement whereas when I get to one there's obvious up movement rotating clockwise and when I get to one in the other direction there's uh, obvious down movement or rotate clockwise so uh, simply what I do is uh, is lift off the, the plate, rotate the gear by one prism doctor counterclockwise, and then recheck it. It's often useful to have little uh, trays, like these are cupcake trays, uh, to hold little parts in when you're disassembling them. Now with this back together again, uh, checking the alignment. Um, definitely off at one. Uh, hard to be sure. Definitely off at two, so um, I'll recheck the alignment uh, optically. So now reassembled, um, I, I found this uh, good optical alignment uh, zero set on both of them when it's at zero. I did actually play a little bit around with the uh, plate alignment. You've got a little bit of uh, um, you can shift the plate up and down side to side and rotate ever so slightly or you can even enlarge the hole slightly if you need a little bit more play but I got it to a good uh, optical alignment on both of these uh, Risleys. Now the markings here even though they're permanent marking uh, can be pretty well cleaned off with um, a lens cleaner such as Glass Plus. This is Glass Plus the uh, brand but I have it stored in a alcohol bottle here because it's easier to deal with. Um, and if there's any remaining markings, um, a small touch of um, rubbing alcohol on a Q-tip can be used uh, to clean off any remaining marks, but usually the Glass Plus will clean off nearly all the markings uh, from the uh, permanent markers that you put in the lens.